Greetings, fellow humans. Bad Mark here with another transmission from Mech Tech Keyboards. And today I'm going to be building and reviewing, as well as sound testing, a very popular board, a revision of a very popular board that many of you might already have. Today I am building the Zoom 65 V2. It is a 65% knobbed keyboard with multiple layouts as well as Bluetooth wireless and numerous case colors, back plates, and weight options. So first things first, let's go ahead and take the box, open it up and see what we have. On top, we have a box that's separated that has the weight for the keyboard. Uh, in my case, I have the anodized gold. Now, yes, I do wish it was a real piece of gold, but I think that would probably shoot up the price of this keyboard at that. Uh, do note that the screws for this weight are already installed, so you have to remove them prior to installing. Next in the box, we have what looks like a keyboard case. Again, we'll come back to that, but we do have our matching gold knob, which does have a set screw. In the box, we do have an FAQ card, uh, that gives you the basic instructions on how to connect as well as QR codes. We also find that we have a pretty comprehensive uh, QA checklist that has been stamped and signed off by numerous individuals to ensure that we have everything that we need. Also included is a well laid out and descriptive build manual. It walks you through the steps in both English and what I assume is Chinese to go through the steps of how to build a keyboard. I am basically going to be delivering a simplified video version of that for you today in case you just want something quick. But I always say keep that manual handy. Not too many kits actually include this. And I think this is a big plus and it just goes to show what thought has been put into this. As well, we can also find in the box is a nice checklist of all the parts included with the keyboard. Now it's very important and they do ask that you do inspect to make sure that everything that you're supposed to be getting is in the box and that there is no issues with quality or any defects that you can see. Um, if you do find something, contact them then before assembling the keyboard. All right, so let's go ahead and take the keyboard case out of its protective plastic bag. We see that we have a very nice textured case. It feels almost like a suede. I don't believe it's suede. Opening it up, we see that it is actually a quite spacey case that has a lot of little envelopes and packages that include everything that we'll need to build out the keyboard. We have some extra screws for the case as well as some screws and standoffs for the PCB plate assembly. We have a set of stabilizers, including two extra stabilizers should one choose to go with the split space bar. We have an envelope with the battery, and we also have a set of Allen wrenches. Also included is a nice coiled USB-A to USB-C cable. We also have a bag that has all of the foams in it. And then we get to the heart of the matter with the PCB. We can see it's a south facing PCB with some of the sockets either turned upside down or literally uh, perpendicular. As this has so many different options for layout, I'm honestly surprised they did this as well as a flex cut. Not only do you have flex cuts, you have LEDs um, that has per key RGB from what the advertisement said. I have not tested that yet. It has numerous layouts, including ISO, split space bars, split backspace, step caps lock, and it's a nice, solid, what, what I can tell, a very well-built uh, PCB. It is a PCB of quality from everything that I've seen. Next, we have the default PC plate. Now, there are other plate options available, but here I've only gotten the PC plate, and as you can see, it is already cut out for all the different layout options that you have. Here is the Zoom 65 V2 in green. Now, I don't have an all green keyboard and I've been for a while thinking about a green build. So that's kind of why I went with this color. And I gotta say, I like the finish of it. It is a, 
if I had to guess, and I'm not a color professional, but it feels to me like a somewhere in between a hunter green and a forest green. And the back plate on the back is very shiny, very nice, but it is a fingerprint magnet. I have had to clean it off quite a few times now. Now, differing from a lot of the in-stock options that you might find out there, this is a case that actually lifts up from the top, or basically you unscrew from the top. So I decided to skip using the included Allen wrench and just went ahead and used my driver to loosen the 10 screws holding the top half of the case onto the bottom plate. And there's four screws on the top, four screws in the bottom, and one on either side. After disassembling, the next step is to go ahead and install the bottom weight. Now, it's important to note that the screws for the bottom weight are already screwed into the weight. So make sure to go ahead and unscrew those prior to installing. Once unscrewed, it's recommended to go ahead and set the weight in place and reinstall or replace the film, the plastic film that was already on the bottom of the keyboard case. Flipping it back over, we can see that those holes line up and we go ahead and use the screws that were in the weight to attach it to the bottom of the case. Next up, it's time to install the battery. Now, I did not get the interior case weight. That usually will hold the battery in place. So I went ahead and used some not super sticky or adhesive double-sided scotch tape and just made two strips to hold the battery in place. I didn't want it rattling around in there and I wanted to make sure it stayed. After that, I went ahead and put the piece of, it feels like a neoprene foam above the battery and making sure to route both the battery and JST cables for the daughter board out through the opening at the top. Next comes the stabilizers. Now, Mellotrix does include the stabilizers unlike other kits I've gotten before. And they're actually quite good stabilizers in my opinion. I'm of the opinion that if the stabilizers are good enough, lubricating just the wire, a little past the elbow to ensure it's lubricated at the points where it's making contact is sufficient enough. Some folks have told me they prefer to also lubricate the stem as well as the inside housing of the stabilizer. What are you guys' thoughts on this? Do you think that's necessary or do you just do the wire? Let me know down below. Let's start a conversation about this. So once we've got the stabilizers assembled and lubricated, the next step is to go ahead and install them on the plate. Now, I recommend to go ahead for the first iteration to put all the foams in there. I know some people are like less foam, more foam. I say just go for it, but you can always take it out. You can always replace it. But the way they recommend to build it is to go ahead and lay the IXPE sheet onto the PCB, then use some random switches, preferably fine pin, and just put them on certain spots around the keyboard to keep the IXPE sheet in place while you ins install the screw and stabilizers above it. Once ready, it's the fun task of slipping on those little washers onto the screws and screwing them on. Now, once we do have all the stabilizers in place, it's a very good practice to go ahead and grab some switches and keys and test to make sure that your stabilizers are performing correctly, that they're returning, they're going up and down, there's no ticking, uh, because now is the time to fix it. You don't want to build everything up and then start to load keys up and then realize that you're going to have to either reinstall or fix or rebuild stabilizers because that's just a lot of work and can I know for myself personally can feel a little defeating. After making sure that all the stabilizers were installed and working as expected, it is time to install the standoffs onto the PC plate. Now, some may say these aren't needed. I would go ahead and stick with it. You might get a little, little bit more flex if you did not install the studs, but I would go ahead and install them, especially since the manual says so, and it could cause some issues with the potentiator meter knob if you have too much flex. So once the studs are in place, it's time to go ahead and lay down the foam for between the plate and the PCB. 
making sure to get it around all of the stabilizers and go ahead and flip the PC plate onto there once you have it all lined up. Once the plate and the PCB assembly is put together, it is time for the gaskets. Now they use a, this is an interesting type gasket, which I have not seen employed before. It is like a hollow rubber cylinder uh, for all intents and purposes. So basically you slip it onto one opening and then kind of push it on through to get it onto the other. It goes all the way around the keyboard and it looks like, I mean, it feels like that it'll, it'll give very decent flex. Once we have the gaskets in place, we can go ahead and install the switches. Now I went ahead and chose some BCPs from KPR. I don't know if you know about the BCPs, but I'll have a review coming on these soon. I like to put the switches in at this point because I am able to, especially when I'm dealing with a keyboard that has multiple layout options, I'm also able to make sure that I'm not going to pop off any hot swap socket because I'm supporting them from the back. And once all the switches are in place, I went ahead and installed the foam under the plate, plate PCB, then connected both the daughter board JST cable as well as the battery JST cable. At this point, we are ready to assemble and close up our case. So we want to ensure that those wires are coming out and they're not going to get pinched. They're coming out of the pocket from the bottom and they're basically run along the back edge so that they're not going to get pinched. Once everything looks good, go ahead and slide the top half of the case back on, ensuring to make room for the potentiator meter knob, and then use the 10 screws to screw it back in. Next, I flip it over and I go ahead and I chose the black feet. It does come with your option of white or black silicone feet. I went ahead and installed the black ones. I felt that, that was a better contrast with the green. For the first build, I went ahead and loaded it up with these double shot PBT OEM, though sculpted, not sculpted, but for surrounder, OEM keycaps that I found on Amazon for $9. I'll, I'll include a link in the description. I was just thoroughly surprised at how cheap this keycap set is and they're 1.7 millimeters thick and I bought this especially for this keyboard I like the green it's not the exact same green but it's not so far off it just creates a nice contrast in my opinion I call them my clean mean green machine so this keyboard is via compatible and it has the availability to select the layout that you're using so you can program it as needed um, and it also has bluetooth now, obviously, you do need to be plugged in uh, through USB to use Vaya. Now, I was not able to, or at least the first Vaya file I found uh, didn't work. Use Vaya that app. So I went ahead, I searched, and I found another JSON file. It'll be in Vaya any day now, as this is just going on pre-order today, the 21st of September. This keyboard, I gotta say, it is very nice. The fact that it has so many different options for you to customize it to your heart's desire is great. Um, it's not crazy flexy. It's nice flexy. I'm sure that you'd probably get a little bit more flex taking out the phone from the bottom, but I actually kind of like how it sounds uh, with it installed. Now, I did do two builds of this keyboard, one using the BCP as well as these double shot um, green keycaps. I've always been a fan of the green and purple colorways. And I had some N2O or nitrous oxide switches from KFA. So I decided to do a little fun build. I loaded it up with the N2O linear switches, which are also quite nice linears, and a set of MT3 Cyber. So I've gone ahead and included sound tests with both of the setups that I did at switches and keycaps. I will be coming back to this keyboard. I have a lot of ideas for it. I'm definitely going to mess around with the different options, do the split space bar. I'm also going to try the split backspace, which I've never used before, but why not give it a go? And this keyboard gives a lot of options. For being a hot swap keyboard, it offers options that is usually only seen on soldered boards, you know, especially to have the ISO and the ANSI in the same keyboard. So now it does give you that option and by you can switch it to ISO. So if you want to go ISO, you can do it. If you want to do a split space bar, you can do it. 
And all of this is done using hot swap sockets. Now do pay attention. Some of these are either upside down or completely perpendicular, uh, but they did it. I mean, through the flex cuts, the traces and everything, there's not a lot of room on there. So the design team, in my opinion, did a good job on the design of this PCB. Now I've been using the keyboard for a couple of days and I got to say, I quite enjoy it. Again, it doesn't have crazy amount of flex, but I have not tried it removing the bottom uh, foam that it has included. I like how it feels. I like how it sounds. I will be modding it because, well, that's just what I do with keyboards. But right now I'm enjoying using this in a stock format and I'm currently using it with the Cyber. So I've got the clean, mean green machine, which was the first build is what I'm calling it. And I've got the Cyber green machine or just cyber green build so i'm going to go ahead and leave you a sound test with both the green mean clean machine as well as cyber green i'd love to hear which one you guys like best until the next transmission keep calm and keyboard on